Lesson 4, 8.1, absolute value functions. So, so far we've just dealt with absolute values. Just as a reminder, if I would say the absolute value of negative 4, it's just the magnitude or the distance away from 0, so it is 4. Or if I would say the absolute value of 4, we know that 4 has a distance uh, to 0 of 4 as well. So an absolute function is one that involves absolute values, okay? but of a variable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start the parent function, or I like to call it the mother function, and we're just going to see what it looks like. So graph y equals x, and I'm going to do that in black, and we also want to graph the absolute value. I'm going to do that in red. So if I were to say uh, if I were to say y equals x, so I'm just, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to say y equals x. That means that this would be negative 3. If I would substitute negative 2 in for here, I would say y equals negative 2. Substitute negative 1 in here, y equals negative 1, 0, and so on. 1, 2, 3. So if I were to graph this thing. It becomes a line. I have 0, 0, I have 1, 1, I have 2, 2, I have 3, 3, and I would have 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, and then the opposite too. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4, negative 4, though that is extrapolating just a wee bit. So I'm just going to draw this line. <laughs> Now, let's talk about this one and start at the bottom. If y is the absolute value of x, x is 3, that means that y is 3. I'm going to adjust so that we can be consistent with color here. 3. If I say that x is 2, y is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. If I say x is 1, the absolute value of x <coughs> is going to be 1, and absolute value of 0 is 0. Here's where it gets a little tricky. If I substitute in negative 1 for this x, the absolute value of negative uh, 1 is 1. If I substitute negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. <coughs> and the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So if I were to plot these points, negative 3, comma 3, negative 3x, positive 3y negative 2x, positive 2y, negative 1x, positive 1y. I get a, and this is just the same, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. This is what our absolute value function looks like. Now some people draw absolute value functions, or some people draw um, quadratics like absolute value functions. I don't know why that got squiggly. That's really funny, actually. I'm going to redo that. Because they they straighten out the they straighten out the the curved uh, tip or at the vertex, but absolute values are literally V's. So another way that I could say is another way that I could do this is I could graph this original line, okay. And anything that is above the x-axis stays, so this stays. Anything below the x-axis bumps up. So this one right here, it's 1 below, it becomes 1 above. At negative 2, it's 2 below, so it becomes 2 above. Um, 3 below, uh, 3 above, etc. That is a much quicker way of graphing it, and we're going to be utilizing that in the next little bit. So an absolute value function has the form y equals f at x, where f of x is a function. Okay, so that means it would pass the vertical line test. It's one-to-one. -one. The x-intercept of the graph of f at x is called a critical point. So here is uh, an x, our x-intercept is also our y-intercept here. This is a critical point. Because the graph changes directions at that point. The invariant point is 
also on the also on the x axis it's it, it's a point that remains unchanged when a transformation is applied to it the inv invariant point for an absolute value function is the x intercepts of the original function we also have invariant points here because these guys right here do not change okay the only thing that changes is this piece right here so there are multiple invariant points a piecewise function. Piecewise function is a function that is composed of two or more separate functions or pieces, that's why we call it piecewise, each with speci its specific domain that combine to define the overall function. Now because we're because we have two very distinct uh, shapes and directions here, we have to kind of sometimes um, uh, define them differently. So the absolute value of a function y uh, equals absolute value of x can be defined as the piecewise function at y equals x if x is greater than 0. So go up back to here. Yes, it's the line y equals x if x equals, um, is, if x is greater than 0. But when x is less than 0, then it is negative, uh, negative x if x is less than 0. So if x is less than 0, we have this right here. It is still, um, it's negative, when we're talking about the y equals mx plus b, the b value is 0, and the slope is negative 1. Okay, so that's how we get the negative x. Since uh, the absolute value of x cannot be negative, the part of the graph of y equals x that is below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis to become y equals negative x on the interval when x is less than zero. The part of the graph of y equals x that is on or above the x-axis is zero or positive and remains unchanged as the line y equals x in, in the interval x is greater than zero. So let's uh, bite, uh, let's sink our teeth into uh, this example right here. For the absolute value function, y uh, equals uh, the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Item number 1, determine the x-intercept and determine the y-intercept. Sketch the graph, state the domain and range, and express as a piecewise function. So first things first, I'm just going to, I'm going to graph, so step 1 graph simply the line y equals 2x minus 3. I'm going to remember to label my axes, that's very important, and to label my graph so I have a proper scale. So if I were to graph y equals 2x minus 3, my x intercept is negative 3 and my slope is 2 so up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1 oh did I go up 3 yes I did up 1 2 over 1 up 1 2 over 1 up 1 2 over 1 so here is my original and we have to be very careful in that we label this y equals 2x minus 3 because we need to be very clear as to what the absolute value function is and is not. So if we were to say a, determine the x and y intercept. Well, the y intercept of uh, the, the original graph is this negative 3. When we bump up all of the x values, Sorry, when we bump up all the, the y values to be positive, our y-intercept will be positive 3 because we're taking everything that's underneath this line and reflecting it in the x-axis. The x-intercept the x -intercept right here is going to be 1 and a half. So I'm just going to put right here, this is the critical point. I'm going to change to red. This right here is our critical point. So this line continues like this. So this is a part of our absolute value function of this line. 
But at this point, we go one down, but we're reflecting it in the x-axis, so we're going to go one up instead of one down. This one goes one, two, three, and this goes one, two, three. So this right here, and I can just, I, I know that I go up one, up two, over two, I can just reverse the, reverse the slope, like that. So when I connect all of my dots here, this right here, that's in red, is my absolute value function. So y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Boom. So we've determined, we've sketched, we'll state. Um, we'll state the domain and we'll uh, state the range. So domain. The domain is, and really, it can cover anything. So x is an element of the reals, or if you wanted to use interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, y, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. y is also an element of the reals. Or, in interval notation, we could say, okay, it goes from 0, and it includes 0, and it goes all the way up to infinity, in round bracket. Either one of these is, uh, is absolutely fine. Now, d, uh, d, which is expressed as a piecewise function. So, um, what we have is we have this bracket that looks like this. So what I'm saying is this is the exact same as y equals 2x, plus, uh, 2x minus 3. So y equals 2x minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 1.5. Okay, because it's the same line we drew over it. But now y equals negative to we're having that uh, the reflection negative 2x minus 3 for x values that are less than or equal to 1.5 that critical point now if you wanted to do a little bit more fancy footwork with the with the algebra that is totally fine you can say negative 2 plus 3 but this is absolutely adequate